Welcome back. This is By the Book, and we are married relationship coaches. I'm Sent. I'm Sam. And today we're talking about Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 18. Talking about Chloe and Michael real mm-hmm. quick. So Chloe goes home. <laughs> they just, they had... Yeah, I get it. They went from the honeymoon straight to the couple's retreat. Mm-hmm. They get back to their joint space, their joint living space, and she's like overwhelmed. I don't know. I feel like she has maybe an anxiety issue, mm. um, which probably a lot of people have. Panic attacks in the middle of the night. Yeah, Those that, I don't. I would not truly anxiety. categorize the way that Michael reenacted them. I wouldn't truly characterize that as a panic attack. But whatever. I think like she just gets kind of overwhelmed. You can see her kind of get wound up, you know. And she expresses it. She expressed it when she was talking to him about coming back, you know, going into the real world. And I don't know if I can do this type of thing. And then she comes back and she can't do it. She's like, I got to go home for a couple of days. Uh, I guess I can respect somebody being self-aware enough to know that they need some space of some time. But I just feel bad because I'm looking at Michael's face mm-hmm. and he looks like so pitiful when she's saying this. Mm-hmm. But he's also very nice. Yeah. So, and very accommodating. Ooh, extremely. Uh, they come back. All is okay, seemingly. Yeah, they have their little... Uh, housewarming mm-hmm. party and what she gets from his friends is that he can be quite a bit of a people pleaser mm. and she has to kind of press in order to see how he's really feeling and I can see that mm-hmm. about him because he seems like like uh, Chloe's friend said Chloe's male friend said that he says all the right things like he's he comes off very polished mm-hmm Uh Kind of like he knows all the right things to say, but does he mean it? Does he live it? Is he true to it? Uh And you don't know stuff like that when you've only known someone for a week. Uh You can't because it hasn't been put to a test. So trying to get him to come out of that, I'm just going to people please, people please, people please. So people accept me. So people like me. That is how he comes off. Mm -hmm. But when you are pressed to your limits with that people pleasing Mm -hmm. and the truth finally comes out it can be explosive so you don't want Michael to be in that situation where it's like oh this has been pissing me off forever and I just haven't said nothing and now I've hit you know I'm up to here with it and I just gotta let it all out Mm -hmm. so I think that was great advice coming from coming from his friends and that's something that she has to look out for I wanted to ask you though do you still feel like Chloe is, is phony? Like, is something reading on her that is, is disingenuous? Um, I don't know if I want to use the word phony, uh, but there is still just a little something. Her highs give me pause. And so even in her, I'm going to say, her, <laughs> her running back to her apartment, was it that she felt that her she was about to go very low, you know, and she didn't want the cameras to see her go very mm. low. She didn't want him to there. see the, the, how low she can really get. And so she was just kind of like doing a shield, you know, trying yeah. to shade herself from it or shade herself from the camera seeing uh, just how low she can possibly go. And so there's something that she's not revealing. And, and, and again, I, in my experience is when I see people who is so cheerful and so smiley, so happy all the time, and that's how they present, then the pendulum, it swings the other way, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if you, what you want to call it. I don't know if you want to call it a clinical bipolar. I don't know if you want to call it a chemical imbalance. I don't know what you want to call it. But in my experience, as far as from a technical side, but in my experience, when people are extremely happy, when it comes back the other way, they're extremely sad or they're extremely angry. Mm. You know, so it comes back the other way in some kind of way. And so I wanted to ask you that because I don't see her the way that you see her. So mm-hmm. I, I def- 
definitely just want to get your perspective on that. I think some of our viewers do see her like you see her. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see her as being that high. That pep. I've seen a lot of people with a lot more pep mm -hmm. than, than Chloe. So she didn't strike me bizarre. She does strike me as somebody who has anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, she strikes me as a very independent person. That's probably because of her age and her being single. Uh, she says herself that she's a very introverted person. I will take her at her word for that. I don't think I've seen her exposed enough, but I would say this process being taxing on her and mm -hmm. causing her anxiety would probably speak to that, to her being introverted and this just being a heavy process for her. And yeah, I, I don't read anything necessarily negative off of her. I just think that she probably still is, one, overwhelmed by the process itself, but also, you know, Michael, like, again, he's a lot. He's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, uh -huh. and nobody is everybody's cup of tea, but he's probably fewer people's cup of tea than, uh -huh. than average uh -huh. because he's so eccentric, uh -huh. and by his own words and Chloe's as well, embraces his feminine. Mm -hmm. And that just sometimes is not an appealing thing. That if you guys hear like a bear snoring, don't worry, it's just the baby. <laughs> he snores like a grown man. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, he continues to show her his masculinity. He brings her to the gym. They have that whole experience. And she claims to be turned on by seeing those masculine parts of him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I I don't want to say that they're going to say yes to decision day because I'm still very concerned. But I would like to see if they can if they can make it. Mm -hmm. I don't dislike either one of them. I actually like Michael quite a bit, mm -hmm. but. Again, he is not everybody's cup of tea, and I, I, I don't want to see her hurt him mm -hmm. while she's trying to make nice, make nice, make nice. Like, I, I can try to do this. I'm going to try to squeeze this brown pig into this square hole and keep trying, trying, trying. And then she's like, that nah, can't do it. And, and kind of snatch the rug from underneath him. That's what I don't want to have happen. And I don't know if that's a mental process that she's going through still after having taken her break. I know she was going through it before, but I hope that if she continues this process with him, that she's either very honest with how off-putting some of the femininity, I guess, if you want to call it that, is to her, or that she's just overcoming and she's like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. For me, uh -huh. I'm not mature enough for it not to matter, I don't think. That would bother me. Chloe is older. She's not as old as me, but she's in the range. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I feel like with some of us at a certain big age, we are not as flexible in terms of like acceptance of that, that level of mm. fluidity. Fluidity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I don't know. It. Maybe one of the younger people could, you know, perhaps that would have been okay for Lauren. But at Chloe, she's 39. I, I think it's just going to eat at her for a while. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know what? I've said it. My wife has said it. Um, I like Michael as well. I, I, I like how he presents as far as being relationship savvy. Um, he pays attention. And not only does he pay his attention, but he's able to converse and communicate mm -hmm. on a high end. If you listen to the guy, you'd be like, wow, this dude is in tune, you mm -hmm. know? And so he, 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 he's attentive. And so those are some very good qualities to have when you're engaging in a relationship. And I'm just like, wow, this, this, this guy has all the intangibles. And even in the, um, 
the uh, after party, Keisha asked him, like, where, where, do, you, where do you get this from? Mm -hmm. You know, because he's very insightful. Mm -hmm. And he said he had to go through some counseling or therapy mm -hmm. to kind of, like, get to where he's at. Yeah, I mean, he's not yeah. a baby either. He's yeah. one of the older people on this season. Mm -hmm. And so he's been through some things. He's been through some experiences. He's had some mm -hmm. relationships, probably a number of them. And it, it requires and, and demands growth. Yeah. From you. It, it, it brings about wisdom. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that he's embraced that. Some people don't. Some people take a long time and they just mm -hmm. keep doing the same stupid stuff. But, you know, he hasn't. And it's refreshing to see somebody with a good attitude. It just comes in a package mm -hmm. that everybody's not going to enjoy. Yeah. You know? That's true. But on the other side, I wanted to talk about that after party a little bit. He's obviously, Michael's doing something right. He's doing something because if that's, if he wasn't, you know, Emily would be giving him the business. <laughs> she ain't got nothing bad to say about him. But and he's sitting right there in the studio with her. They were so many, like, she's probably not as close to Chloe. That so could she, be, she they didn't all start at the same time. Yeah, she wouldn't know. And and they're not the, in the same age group. But she, she, she could share that man hate, though, if he was cutting she up. She could. She could. I, I really like Michael. I really like how he speaks, and I don't want to think that he's disingenuous. I think mm -hmm. it, I don't get that from him at all. I like that he cut his hair. I like seeing him with his cut hair on the after party. Mm -hmm. um, those bangs or whatever it was wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> so maybe maybe Chloe convinced him to do that, and that was part of the trade off for her maybe saying yes on the decision. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. But anyway, that's that's really all I have. On Chloe and Michael because we just haven't seen that much of them yet. I want to get deeper into it with them, see where they are at their like one month anniversary yeah. and stuff, and and really kind of make an assessment as to what's really to Chloe. I'm gonna reserve opinion on her because I'm not reading the same thing you are, but I have my eyes open for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to see it. So. Anyway, guys, <laughs> drop your comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.